In this segment, we're going to talk about what state-of-the-art parsers look like uh, along three different axes. We're going to look at first constituency parsers, then we're going to look at so-called graph-based dependency parsers, and then transition-based dependency parsers. So starting with constituency parsers, the most modern parsers do not use uh, PCFGs as such. So it's much more common to build what's called a CRF parser. And the idea here is that sort of like CRFs for something like NER, fundamentally what we're doing is we're scoring, in NER we were scoring the presence of a tag over a particular position in a sentence, and we could score things like tag transitions as well. Here we can do the same thing. We can score the presence of non-terminals, or we can score rules in a way that's anchored to the sentence. So this score actually doesn't just look at the grammar symbols, like what, what was happening in PCFGs, but it can actually look at a whole bunch of information. So it can look at the grammar symbols, and it can look at the sentence and the indices that these grammar symbols are anchored to in the sentence. So it can look at like what are all the different words underneath this particular noun phrase. And so again, to draw an analogy with NER, what we saw there was that it was easy to build features that looked at like, you know, okay, what's two words after this word? And so we can do the same thing here as well, where we can consult the input freely um, with our features, and you know, we can do something like build a, a sparse feature vector, and some of these features might say something like the following. We have a production here. The last word of the left child is the word report. And we're going to conjoin with the fact that we are predicting this NP goes to NPPP rule here. So again, this is a true, like we've been looking at f of x, y as the notation for thinking about features. This is a true kind of conjunction of these two things, right? We're looking at a complex property of the input that also depends on the particular, uh, you know, grammar rule that uh, we're using here. And this is a very useful feature. This can learn things, for example, that like if you have a noun phrase that uh, ends in report, it's often going to attach to a prepositional phrase because you might have a report, uh, you, you often report about stuff, right? You report on Mars. So this is an idea due to Ben Taskar et al. in 2004 um, that has since been followed up by uh, many others, including uh, David Hall and myself and Dan Klein. And the idea is that we can either build these with discrete features, like a lot of the early work did, or actually compute these scores with a neural network. And so the in the cool thing about CRF parsing is that the chart remains discrete and fairly simple. In that, uh, you know, we're just thinking about parsing with a basic, uh, a kind of basic PCFG here from the standpoint of CKY. So the challenging thing is that the scores of each of these productions becomes a little bit complicated. So in order to figure out the score of this NP, we need to you know, compute all these features, maybe run a neural net, whatever. Um, but then once we've done that computation of the feedforward networks and the discrete features, all we do is we run the CKY dynamic program, as we've already talked about how to do, and it kind of spits out our answer, and all you're changing is basically what the scores of the productions at each step are. All right, so this is a kind of standard uh, template for building these kinds of parsers. So um, more recent work has used uh, these pre-trained models. So for example, uh, Kiteyev and Klein used ELMO to produce word embeddings. Uh, that they then fed into an encoder and used the same kind of CKY style decoder to uh, produce the trees. So the scores they get are 95.2 F1 on the Penn Tree Bank development set. Uh, and so remember that we were looking at these lexicalized parsers that were getting around 89 or something. Um, so that's a big reduction in errors. And even the kind of you know, more recent parsers you know, prior to 2018 had been getting around 92, 93. Um, and so this was a kind of big jump in accuracy. Um, 
And so there's a version of this out with BERT, um, as well as a kind of transition-based version of these. These are the best constituency parsers that we have today. All right, so let's talk about graph-based dependency parsers. So these are going to follow the same idea as uh, CKY parsers for constituency. Um, here, what we're going to have is we're going to have features that look at particular dependency arcs. So they're going to look at, for example, the whole sentence, and they're going to look at one word and its parent. But we can look at, generally, the context that these words occur in. And so we can, again, design features that can join up these things in different ways, um, including, in particular, things like the head tag and the modifier tag. Um, this kind of captures, OK, is this a reasonable pair of things to draw an arrow between? Uh, the head tag and the modifier word, so we can start introducing words into these features to learn things in a more fine-grained way. Um, we can look at context words also, like what's the word before the modifier word? Or what are other kind of symbols that are getting crossed by this arc that are like in between the two words we're thinking about here? And so the, what, we, what we could do is we can assign a score to a dependency structure by just summing up weights times features of each arc. Um, and like I said, there are dynamic programs that allow you to find the best parse. So we can actually go a little bit crazier with this. Uh, Terry Koo and Mike Collins explored ways of simultaneously looking at uh, multiple arcs. So this can either look like so-called grandparents, like what we're seeing here, um, or you can have sibling features. Uh, and you, know, you can go even more sophisticated than this. Uh, this requires a very complex dynamic program. Um, it adds an extra factor of n there, um, but the main issue is kind of the implementation overhead and, and sort of complexity to actually build this thing. All right, and so fortunately, we don't actually have to do most of that stuff. We can stick with this first order, this so-called first order framework, where we just look at single arcs, and again appeal to this idea of neural CRFs. So. Uh, what we do is we take the sentence, we embed it with an LSTM, and we get uh, embeddings of both the parent and the child. And then we just take their uh, product using this matrix U. And so we can very efficiently encode the whole sentence with an LSTM, encoding both words and part of speech tags. That's what's happening at the bottom here. And then we take uh, these word and tag vectors. And we do this uh, matrix multiply, this, this biaffine product here. And uh, we get scores on the right, this num words by num words matrix, that tells us how likely each arc is. And so this is exactly the same as what the weights times features computation was doing before, um, but now we're doing it with neural nets. And so uh, the, you know, this came out in 2017 before Elmo and BERT and all that stuff. Uh, upgrading this with BERT basically gives you the best graph-based dependency parser. So uh, I guess the last thing I'll say about this point is just that uh, you know, between the ideas we've seen from CRFs and the ideas from feedforward neural networks, we can combine these things and build these state-of-the-art tools um, once we kind of put in the right dynamic programs here uh, for inference. So we've now seen all the pieces so far to understand what's going into these state-of-the-art models. Um, and then I'll just close out here by talking about transition-based parsers. So uh, this is uh, due to Don Chi Chen and Chris Manning. What they did is they took our stack and buffer from this transition-based uh, parsing framework, they extracted a bunch of words and part of speech tags and labels from those, looking at things like you know the top of the stack, two back on the stack, the child of the second back word on the stack, et cetera. They encode these into vectors, they put it through a feedforward neural net, and make this classification decision. Um, so 
once, so there were some additional improvements uh, done by folks at Google, Daniel Andor et al, that led to this getting around 94.6 uh, unlabeled attachment score. That's basically just accuracy on dependency decisions um, using this system. Um, so they have a few extra bells and whistles here, and it's a little bit less good than the Dozat parser that we saw on the previous slide, the Dozat and Manning parser, um, but it's pretty fast. Uh, and so again, this was a you know this feature set was initially pioneered by uh, Chen and Manning, but um, it's been kind of since fine since then fine tuned. Um, and just to give you an idea of why people care about this transition based framework, this is this is from the original Don Chi Chen work. You could see that the performance uh, is not actually beating other systems like MST parser in terms of accuracy. Um, but uh, it's super, super fast. So these graph-based parsers, like MST parser, can do about 10 sec sentences a second, and their neural shift-reduced parser, Don Chi Chen's, could do uh, 1,000. So they're now very fast and give good performance. If you want to run a trans uh, dependency parser on a lot of data, typically this is the framework that you're going to use, unless you like really, really care about that last bit of performance. So, this gives you a sense of how we combine the ideas we've seen so far in this course, uh, kind of structured learning and CRFs with neural networks, with dynamic programs and inference and structural ways of producing parses to build basically the state of the art systems for either producing constituency or dependency parses. And that's the end of this segment.